RIP bears, when you consider the evidence, we believe there is more upside coming for stocks. Hey, I'm Luke Downey going over our latest insights at Map Signals. Let's get to it. So people need to stop with the fear mongering. Everyone is talking about Fed rate cuts and how this is going to really put the economy in this bad position. Well, let's go ahead and look back at recent history to see if that holds some water. If we go back to 1990, there are nine initial Fed rate cut periods, and I've got them highlighted right here. So you got one, two, three, four. You can see that in the dot com, we had a recession going into 2007, 2008. You can see the rates started to fall. There was a recession. Then you've got 2019 and then obviously the COVID pandemic. So a couple of scary areas when the Fed started to cut rates because the economy was in trouble. But here's the deal. Does that mean that when the Fed cuts rates, stocks are doomed? Well, let's go ahead and check out some cool insight so if we go back and we look at those periods and we're looking at the ones post 1995 and we're only focused on the date of the initial fed rate cut check out the s p 500 s p small cap 600 and the s p mid cap 400 look at the forward returns here's what a lot of the bears miss so if we go six months after that initial rate cut you'll see the s p 500 is positive and you've kind of got mixed results for small and mids. But if you go out one in two years, that is what you want to be focused on, right? Don't be day trading looking for uh, you want to be looking for the longer term trend here. And what we see small caps, they're up 13.7 percent a year later and roughly the same performance for mid caps. You go out two years and that's where the juice starts to get squeezed. 28% for the S&P small cap 600 and just over 30% for the S&P mid cap 400. Again, these are higher levered companies in the small and mid cap area. So as rates come down, profits surge. And that's one area that we love right now going into 2025. But it's not just history that you want to focus on. Let's look at the here and now and how do we do that? Well, let's look at the big money index. This is really telling us how strong the money flows are under the surface of the market. We've got this S&P 500, that's the SPY ETF. And then we have our big money index. It's actually making multi-month highs right now, okay? So as the S&P is kind of just flatlining over that same period, the BMI is going up and that's due to a huge rotation. A lot of people have been talking about the weak close for the market. Don't focus on that. Focus on the number of stocks that are likely getting accumulated. And here we can see over the past few days, healthy buying. 76% buy day, 87% buy day. These are basically averaging 90% buy days. Okay, when you start to see that, you start to believe that institutions are buying stocks. That just means there's more upside so what have they been buying? It's the same areas we've been telling you for so long. So if we look at the few days of last week when we ran this study, we can see that small and mid caps, that's where a lot of the appetite has been, right? We've been talking about real estate. We've been talking about industrial stocks. We've been talking about financials. If you're only focused on mag seven names, you are missing a huge world of stocks but let's just go ahead and drive this home really quickly and recap the bears are probably going to be in some pain next year due to what's going on under the surface of the market you throw in the fact that the fed is cutting rates and that's going to just really push inflows to another level you want to be looking for great stocks to buy that are not on the lips of the media map signals helps you find that you guys have a good one and i will talk to you next time